there is a very peculiar property that light rays demonstrate when it goes from one point to another. It chooses a path that takes the least amount of time. Maybe the light ray is lazy or maybe it's in a hurry to go from one place to another. But it is a fact of nature that it chooses a path that takes the least amount of time. For example, if I say that there is a light ray which goes from point A to point B, and this is one medium and this is a different medium, and this is the intersection between both the medium, then there can be an infinite possible paths in between these two points. Certain paths may take larger amount of time for the light ray to go from A to B, given the velocity of light ray is different in both mediums. Certain paths can take lesser amount of time. But the actual path traversed by the light is always that path which takes the least amount of time for the light to go from A to B, given its velocity is different in both the medium. And this path is not always a straight line. Now, why is that? Well, you see, it has nothing to do with light ray making a conscious decision of choosing a path that takes least amount of time. It just so happens that in nature, particles when they undergo trajectories, systems when they undergo change of state, follow some kind of an extremization principle, which is also followed by light in this particular case. There are probabilities associated with light ray choosing a particular path as the wave goes from one medium to another. And it just so happens that the probability that has a maximum value is associated with the path with the least amount of time period. And we can use this very simple principle to demonstrate the Snell's law. By the way, this principle is known as the Fermat's principle. It states that a light ray as it goes from one point to another always chooses the path that takes the least amount of time. This principle is therefore also known as the principle of least time. And we can use this principle to demonstrate a very important, interesting experimental fact about how light bends as it goes from one medium to another, also known as the Snell's law. The Snell's law gives us an idea about when a light ray goes from one medium to another, how does it bend? What is the relationship of the angle of incidence to the angle of refraction? And just by using a very simple calculation, we can demonstrate or we can find out the Snell's law using the Fermat's principle. Okay, so let us choose a very random path from A to O to B that we are assuming the light photon takes. And let us define some parameters. For example, the vertical distance from the interface to A is, let's suppose, some kind of a variable that I am calling as Y1. And the vertical distance from the interface to B is a variable, let's suppose, Y2. All right. And the horizontal distance from this vertical line that A subtends on the interface to O I am going to call this as x and again let's suppose the distance between a and b along the horizontal direction between a and b is l in that kind of a situation this distance turns out to be l minus x so now we have set up the problem now if i'm interested in figuring out the time it takes for light to travel this path what am I going to do? I'm just going to divide the distance with the speed, right? So the speed is given by an idea about the refractive index of the medium. So let's suppose this first medium has a refractive index of N1. And how does the refractive index relate to speed of light? Well, it tells us that the refractive index is simply equal to the speed of light in vacuum divided by the speed of light in that medium. Let's suppose it is V1, all right? And the second medium, let's suppose, has a refractive index of N2, which will give us C upon V2, where V2 is the velocity of light in that particular medium. So given these parameters, how much time does it take for the light photon to go from A to O? The distance AO divided by the velocity of light in that medium. What is the distance AO? If you look at this right angled triangle, the distance AO is the hypotenuse of this right angled triangle, which means that this hypotenuse is simply equal to square root of y1 square plus this distance x square. Hence, the time period it takes is equal to 
root over y1 square plus x square divided by the speed of light in vacuum v1 which is equal to c upon n1. Similarly, the time taken for light to go from 0 to b or o to b is the distance hypotenuse divided by the velocity of light in that medium. What is the distance of hypotenuse? In this right angle triangle, this hypotenuse is simply equal to root over L minus x whole square plus y2 square. So I can add this particular term here. The distance is L minus x whole square plus y square divided by the velocity of light in that medium which is v2 is equal to c upon n2. This is the time period it takes for the light to go from point A to point B. Now using this expression, how can I find the point O corresponding to the minimum time period? One thing I can do is I can shift the point O in the left hand side or in the right hand side consider a large number of paths, calculate the time period corresponding to those paths and find out that value of x corresponding to which the time period is minimum. This is one way of doing it. Or I can use an analytical approach of figuring out that particular value of x for which time period t is 0 and that is simply by stating that the derivative of time with respect to x is equal to 0. So let us do the derivative. So if I'm interested in doing this derivative, for the first term, this simply turns out. So if I take the term n1 upon c outside and do the derivative of the numerator, this simply becomes in the denominator, I have twice n1 square plus x square. In the numerator, I have two of x. And in the second term here, I have n2 upon c. And in the denominator, I have twice of l minus x whole square plus x square and in the numerator I have twice l minus x n minus 1. So if the derivative of time with respect to x is equal to 0, I can say that n1 upon c, this by the way is supposed to be y1, okay. This is supposed to be y1. So x upon root over y1 square plus x square is equal to, so if I take this term to the other side, the minus 1 will vanish and I will be left with n2 upon c uh, l minus x upon root over l minus x square plus x square. The c and the c gets cancelled and I can substitute in these expressions, these terms by uh, assigning a particular angle to the angle of incidence. Let's suppose I call it theta 1 and an angle to the angle of reflection or refraction, I call it theta 2. So from the diagram, what is theta 1? So theta 1 is basically the angle that the light ray makes with the vertical axis. So what is sine theta 1? Sine theta 1 is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. What is the opposite side? The opposite side is x divided by the hypotenuse. So x divided by the hypotenuse is actually equal to sine theta 1. So n1 sine theta 1 is equal to again l minus x divided by this l minus x divided by the hypotenuse is the sine theta 2 sine theta 2 is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse which can therefore be written as n2 is equal to sine theta 2 which is nothing but the snell's law this gives us a relationship between the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction of the actual path traversed by the light photon as it goes from one medium to another in the intersection of these two medium where n1 and n2 give us an idea about the refractive index which can also be written as sine theta 1 upon sine theta 2 is actually equal to n2 upon n1 which is simply equal to nothing but using these two relationships I can say v1 upon v2 this is the Snell's law that tells us that the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction has a relationship of this with the refractive index. And it can be easily derived from the idea that the light photon is choosing a path that takes the least amount of time as it goes from one point to another. And that is not necessarily the straight line.